Welcome back. So first of all, it's been a while since I have seen you. So let's just have a quick moment of silence for my hair. All right, back to the video. Today, we are going to be talking about baking. If you're not already a baker, now is a great time to start. After all, there's truly not much else to do with your time in... In order to make things that actually taste good and be able to have some fun in the kitchen, it's helpful if you have some understanding of the ingredients and how you can use them to tweak recipes or even to create your own recipes. I know that the title of the video says basics, but I really think that a better description would be baking fundamentals because we're really not going to be talking about how to read a recipe or measure ingredients or what kind of tools you need for baking. But instead, we're going to be doing a little bit of a deep dive into the main ingredients that you need to understand so that you can be creative in the kitchen and bake to your fullest potential. Let's get started. Now we're going to start with flour. Which admittedly is probably the least sexy of all the baking ingredients that we're going to talk about. But it's also really, really important to understand as a base for all of your recipes. Quick disclaimer before we get any further into the video, I am not a pastry chef. I am a librarian. <laughs> but I have done a lot of personal baking over the years, and I've also watched a lot of Bon Appetit test kitchen videos, so I'm basically a professional at this point. So you probably already know that there are tons of different kinds of flour out there from all-purpose flour to gluten-free flour to flour made from obscure ingredients and nuts. But today we're really only going to be talking about the main types of flour and what you can use them for. Today we'll be talking about all-purpose flour, whole wheat flour, almond flour, and a general aside about gluten-free flours. Let's start with all-purpose flour. So all-purpose flour, or a lot of the times abbreviated as APF, is exactly what it sounds like. It's a flour for all purposes. It is made from white wheat, a soft white wheat, and in the before times it was widely available at basically every single grocery store. get a bag of flour depending on what stage of lockdown we're in. You can use all-purpose flour in both sweet and savory dishes. APF is flexible enough to work in almost every recipe and if you see in a recipe where it just says use flour you can pretty safely assume that they're talking about all-purpose flour. Now there are several subtypes of white flours that are very similar and look a lot like all-purpose flour, but are used for specific or specialty purposes. For example, double zero flour is often used in making pizza dough, and cake flour is used in recipes that require um, a little bit more of a delicate structure like angel food cake. Sometimes you really, really do need to use those flours, but a lot of the time it's either baker's preference or you can create that type of flour doing a few simple additives and tricks to the all-purpose flour that you already have in your house. For example, if a recipe calls for cake flour and you don't have any, you can create your own cake flour at home using all-purpose flour and cornstarch. What makes these specialty flours a little bit different than all-purpose flour is that they have a slightly different protein content and the gluten within the flour behaves a little bit differently and therefore you get a slightly different texture or rise from the flour than you would from just regular all-purpose flour. Now let's move on to our second type of flour which is whole wheat flour. Whole wheat flour is similar to white all-purpose flour 
in that it is made from wheat as well as in the name um, but this particular type of flour is made from all three parts of the wheat instead of just two that white flour is used so it's less refined than a white flour um, it's also a little bit more dense you might notice when you take it out of the package that it feels a little bit less powdery um, and a little bit more substantial and that's because both it's made with the whole grain again but it also gets a lot of oils from the process of grinding it that white flour doesn't have so it gives it just a little bit more moisture and density than white flour does have you might want to use whole wheat flour when you are creating something that requires a little bit more structure or density something like um, a whole wheat muffin comes to mind or even whole wheat pancakes if you're looking for something that is um, just going to fill you up a little bit better. Theoretically, you can use wheat flour as a one-to-one -one replacement in recipes um, that usually ask for white or all-purpose flour. Um, I've seen it in everything from cookies to pie crust to even a whole wheat croissant, which to me kind of defeats the purpose, but you do you. If you do want to substitute wheat flour for white flour in a recipe, I recommend using slightly less wheat flour than the recipe calls for. Um, a good general rule of thumb is to do three quarters of a cup of wheat flour for every one cup listed in the recipe for white flour. Um, you can always adjust and add more flour later, but it's a little bit harder to add more moisture back into a dish once you have added all that flour. So it's better to err on the side of caution, and if it looks a little too thin, add maybe a tablespoon of flour at a time, and then adjust. Just be prepared to experiment and have fun with your recipes and try different things. Make sure that you're noting the amounts that you're using when you're creating things so that you can go back and recreate it later. As an aside before we move on, a lot of recipes call for wheat flour in the guise that it somehow makes the recipe healthier. And while wheat flour does have more fiber content than all-purpose flour, any recipe that you are then adding two cups of sugar to is not healthy, no matter which way you spin it. That does not mean that you shouldn't eat it, but you should always enjoy these things in moderation. So maybe you really, really, really want to bake something, but you are totally out of flour in your house. You don't have white flour, you don't have all-purpose flour, you don't have wheat flour. What are you supposed to do? Don't panic, because if you have a blender, you can grind your own flour at home. You can grind flour out of lots of different things, usually various grains like oats or nuts and seeds, but today I specifically want to talk about almond flour. If you have almonds at home, you can make almond flour. To make true almond flour that you, has a lighter texture that you can use in things like cakes or muffins, um, you're going to want to buy blanched, peeled almonds. You can find these at any grocery store. If the almonds that you're using are regular raw almonds and they still have the skin on them, you can still grind those up and use those, but technically you wouldn't be using almond flour, you would be using almond meal, which is totally fine, it's just a little bit denser than almond flour, so it's going to alter the texture of whatever you're making just a little bit. So after you have whatever almonds you're going to use, you just pop them into a blender, grind them up, it happens really really fast, so maybe 10 seconds or so, it will become sort of a fine powder, and you'll know you've gone too far if you end up with almond butter. Be warned that almond flour is a little bit sweet. It's not truly flavor neutral like all-purpose flour or whole wheat flour. So I wouldn't really recommend using these in savory dishes, but experiment and see what works. The last flour that we have to talk about today is kind of a subgroup of flour and covers a bunch of different types of flour, and that is gluten-free flour. Now, technically almond flour is gluten-free flour, but there are other products out there that are marketed as gluten-free flour that you can buy as well that are pre-made at the store. This may be somewhat controversial, but in my opinion, if and only if you have some kind of medical or dietary reason why you cannot consume gluten, there is no reason for you to use gluten-free flour. 
There is absolutely no evidence that gluten-free flour is in any way healthier for you if you don't have some kind of aforementioned medical condition or allergy that would keep you from eating gluten. But gluten-free product makers have absolutely done a great job making you believe that there is. Hashtag capitalism. <laughs> now I'm lucky enough to be able to eat gluten. So I don't really have to worry about this and don't have much experience baking with gluten-free flour to give you tips. But I will say that I have friends who don't eat gluten and their recommendation is to look up specific recipes that are designed with gluten-free flour in mind and then learn how those flours kind of behave before you start trying to make your own recipes. And that's the video! I hope you learned a little bit about what kind of flours might be right for your baking needs. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in our next video. Bye!